Hello everybody, my name is Igor, aka One Hawk, aka One Half of Two and Up Gamers, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls with Woodhack the Ginger Raisin. In the more recent episodes, we took down Quaylog, we took down the Iron Golem and Sense Fortress, and then we went on an adventure in which we died a couple times to get the Large Ember. Uh, which we needed to upgrade our weapons, and now we brought our scythe up to plus nine, our great scythe. And boy, howdy, is it great! It's a lot of damage right there. Uh, what I have planned for this episode is first off, sit down in the front of the fire, enjoy a little ambient relaxation. Actually, I just want to level up my endurance a little bit. And now, we work our way back to Adar Londo, which involves taking the grueling journey through Sen's Fortress. Actually, hold on. We have all of these soft souls that we haven't consumed yet. Uh, why not, you ask? Well, because I forget things really easily, because I'm that <laughs> kind of stupid. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to crunch as many of these as we possibly can, which is basically everything we own. Um, and I think we're going to have enough just to boost our endurance. Okay, we're going to crunch one more. And then we're going to boost our endurance two levels. Which is always useful. Do just having the increased stamina helps so much when it comes to dodging and avoiding damage. Because, uh, personally, I don't know how you feel about this, but... Personally, I find the role much superior to the block, and I think most people would agree with me on that. It's much more difficult to use. I'll grant all of you that, but the role is just you can just you can 100% damage reduction. I mean, look at it that way. It's more than well, actually, it's the same as most shields. You get my point. Yeah, you it gets better. It's just, just take my word for it. I've played like 300 hours of this game. Snakes no longer take 55 damage; they take 215. So this would have been a good idea to do beforehand. I guess it's the one problem with doing the run this way is that you completely skip over the, the large ember and as a result, your weapon is very weak for a very long time. Oh, the nightmares. Oh, God, we were just here. I thought we were done. I was so I was so excited to be just done with An Orlando. Fucking Anor Londo, I meant Sense Fortress. You know what I meant, look, it's been a- Look, you sit here and you talk for like three hours and you play Dark Souls on end. It's gonna get to you, man, it's gonna get to you. You start making dumb decisions, you start saying really stupid crap. Which makes you think, did I play three hours of Dark Souls before I started recording this Let's Play? No, I just say stupid crap all the time. Uh, I think the boulder's actually gonna- oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh god, if the boulder comes down, I'm so boned! Hold on. Guys, hold on. This might actually be useful. Nope. Nope. We're gonna murder this snake, man. The other snake I got murdered by arrows. Now that was useful. That was nice. That turned out well. We're gonna do what we did, the same thing as before. I mean, Sense Fortress is a really nice... Jesus Christ, I started gyrating there. Sense Fortress is a nice area once you get used to it, but coming back to it after not having played Dark Souls for a little while is always just terrifying. The pendulums. The fucking losing your souls on the beam suspended just fucking in the middle of the... It, I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still sour about that. I'm still- it left a bad taste in my mouth. Not the bad. I mean, it's 5,000- it's 500 souls. No, 5,000. 5,000 souls, big whoop, but still. It's- it's the principle. You may have noticed this is going a lot easier than last time, as I mentioned. F 215 damage. 262 damage is a lot more than 55. Which is what we were hitting for with the Great Scythe plus 2. I think now you understand why I really Really didn't want to go through Anor Londo with a great scythe plus two. I mean, the 40 dex does make it a better weapon, but by no means a good weapon. However, great scythe plus nine is a different story. Once we get this to plus 10 or plus 11, I'm not sure which one of those is the threshold, I guess. Once we get it to one of those two values, the scaling will jump from B to A, which means that our dexterity bonus will increase the damage uh, the great scythe does massively. And that's really going to come necessary when we start fighting the later bosses in the game, which you unlock after clearing Anor Londo. 
uh, if you remember the intro of the game in which we saw uh, the Scaleless Dragon Seath, the Gravelord Nito, the Witch of Isolith, and the Lord of Sunlight Gwyn, those are your last four bosses of the game. Spoilers! But I've just gone to the point where I'm not explaining so much stuff that I, I just might as well just throw shit out. And yeah, those are our last four bosses, and they're gonna become- they're basically gods! So we're gonna need a good, like a decent scythe if we want to take them out. We've seen this cutscene, so I'll just skip over it. And we're back in the city of the gods, ready to take it on. Our armor is still the same armor we started the game with, which is basically just cloth. Oh, did not mean to take that off. It's just, it's just I swear, officer, she just came off. I was just walking in the. Oh no. We'll we'll take these guys out uh, for good measure. I think they give three k souls apiece, which is really nice. Maybe 1,800, actually. What is it? Oh, it's 1,500. I was close. I was close. They also have uh, chests behind them. The chests usually have useful items in them. I mean, that's usually what chests do. Unless they're in Dark Souls, in which case they can actually be mimics. Uh, much like in Torchlight and those kind of games. And they're not fun. Oh, boy, howdy are they not fun. We haven't encountered any yet. There is one in Sense Fortress that is actually quite infamous because it's in a room filled with chests. But there's also a couple in An Orlando. I think there's three total, and I'll make sure to point all those out and just watch yourself because there are tells, but they're very subtle. They're very subtle. And they do one-shot you. If you open a, a Mimic, you're dead. Like, you're just dead. Over here, we have An Orlando's Firekeeper. We, so we have the Firekeeper and Firelink Shrine who couldn't talk. Now this one, though, this one can talk. However, <laughs> the audio seems to have cut out for it, so that was very anticlimactic. Welcome to the lost city of Anor Londo, Chosen Undead. You seek Lord Grin's old keep. Exit here, and head straight yonder. If you are the Chosen One, a revelation shall visit thee. What follows thereafter depends upon you. As you can see, the voice I chose to give her is basically the same one the developers gave her, so... Don't tell anybody, but I actually voice acted that character. Also, this menu won't close. Never mind, there it is. Alright. If we were to turn left, we'd gain access to an area that ends at a dead end, because we haven't unlocked that area yet. So we're gonna go... We're gonna take the kind lady's advice, and go dead ahead. It's quite interesting if you think about this, actually. I've never noticed, noticed this before, but if you notice, the elevator at the top looks like a sun, and downhill looks like a sun. But in the middle, it looks like a moon! And if you know about Gwendolyn, the sub-boss of this area, that actually is quite interesting, because Gwendolyn is a priest slash priestess of the moon. It, there's a whole story there that I might go through. <laughs> I might if we actually do fight the boss. But chances are we'll sort of just graze right over that. The boss is quite helpful actually. You do get some cool stuff from him. Hit her. I don't know. I really don't know. Gwendolyn is just a confusing character. But yeah, there might be some sort of symbolism indicating that Anna Londo's true power actually comes from Gwendolyn, which it does. Etc. Etc. Illusions, magic, Dark Souls, ambiguity, and I think I've used enough buzzwords to, you know, validate that sentence. If you do some crazy hardcore parkour and jump from that but buttress, I think those are buttresses. I don't know. We'll just call it a buttress. If you jump from that to here, that's actually the way the game makes you go, which is just ludicrous. This next area, a little bit worse. You get these guys who are very quick. Uh, they do stack bleed damage on you, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, they go down very easy, though, because you can see they're basically wearing just bed sheets. Go up this ladder, we'll actually get to the f this game's uh, <coughs> hardcore parkour component. And, good god, is it irritating. Going through here without a shield is probably a bad idea, because as you saw, these guys throw daggers. But I think we'll be fine if we just don't look down. Or if we just stand perfectly still. What you can actually do is sometimes they have this jump. Okay, I nearly fell off. Okay. Oh, Jesus. As you can see, they have a jump attack, which if they, the AI messes with them a bit. God damn it. It's really not fun. I'm gonna die. Thank God he's still throwing those. Okay, they don't stack bleed on you. But, they're still nightmares. Oh, Jesus. This place, this place is just a bed of nightmare and terror. Oh, God, he fell. Okay. Okay. Oh, guys, we made it. We got across the...
ridiculously thin. Oh god, he's alive. Never mind. We got past the ridiculous parkour, and I. Oh god, that's mostly it. There is one more segment like that that's actually worse, if you can believe that. Um, if you ever play Dark Souls, you know what I'm talking about. You you know what I'm talking about. You'll never forget it. If we lower this bridge, we go to the very few cutscenes in Dark Souls, and we will link that area with the gargoyle that where we. Let's try that again. We'll link the area where we killed the previous gargoyle to the rest of the level, and that lets us progress in Anarlon, though. But we have to kill another gargoyle. As with everything in Dark Souls, it's gargoyles involved. Uh, something worth mentioning, if you cut off their tails like that, you can get a weapon! Um, apparently that only applies to bosses though, so I think that the, that happiness in my voice just immediately went. We got the weapon anyway. Gargoyle's halberd, gargoyle's shield. You also get a gargoyle helmet, if you really want to take yourself out like one of those assholes. Um, you also get the gargoyle tail axe? I don't know, I think I'm just making stuff up at this point. Anyway, gargoyles everywhere. And now we have Anorlando. <coughs> this area is very difficult to fight your way through, so as every pro with Dark Souls, this is a nice touch by the way, how the giants and the normal people have different sets of stairs. This is little things. These guys are dicks to fight, but they're really slow, so you can just run past them. Like, no problem. Uh, these guys are a bit of a different story. You can actually get them to back off the cliff if... Not this one. This one goes, this one goes after you. Uh, the one dead ahead as well is one you have to fight, but the one, you can't see it right now. That one down there, if you position yourself properly and go to the proper attack side of him, he'll just jump backwards. OH MY GOD! <laughs> okay, that was close. That was way too close. <clears throat> but, it's not a problem when you have a great scythe plus nine. Great scythe plus nine available. Oh no. <laughs> well, we got juked there. But of course we can just two shot these guys because Great Scythe. Plus 9, OP. Bye now. Okay, this is the area I was talking about. Uh it doesn't it's not that much of an issue if you just run. I took full damage. Uh apparently I twisted an angle or some shit, I guess. Uh there's more of these guys here that you can fight, I mean if you have the balls for it. If you're like me though, you're just gonna run and hope to God that these two assholes don't kill you. Have I mentioned there's two assholes? Because from software hates people. Positioned the like on these narrow ass walkways and they shoot massive arrows at you. Fucking assholes. Of course what you do is you just run. You listen very carefully for when the arrows are coming. And then you murder the crap out of them. However, sometimes they murder the crap out of you. But if you do end up parry, yes, guys, guys, we didn't die on like the walkway of death. We got three dragon slayer arrows. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Whoo! We made it. We made it. We go through this fog wall. We enter Anorlando proper. We enter the building of Anorlando. And on our left here, behind a door. Wouldn't you believe it? The devs decided to be nice and they put a bonfire and they brought Solaire back. Not sure how I feel about the Solaire because that man is batshit insane. Also, pretty sure he insinuates that you're gay at this point. Let's f <laughs> gonna find out. Oh, there you are. You've been quiet these days. Smooth summoning, aren't they? Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. Talk to him one more time, and he gets kind of personal. You really are fond of chatting with me, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I think you have feelings for me. Oh no, dear me. Pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, so there. You're so hated. You're so lovable and so batshit crazy. If you don't know the story about it, Solaire is a member of a group called the Sunlight Warriors, and there's an item. <coughs> their currency, essentially. What allows you to rank up in their group, their covenant, um, called, which is basically a little sunlight coin. And in the description it says that the warrior who founded the cult, not the cult, the warrior who founded the covenant was still watches over his warriors to this day. Oh, there it is! Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. We can actually read it right now. How professional. Guys, how professional was that? I'm sorry, I can't even find it now. A badge of ultimate honor. 
This faintly warm metal engraved with the symbol of the sun is the ultimate honor awarded those who summon the warrior of sunlight and complete a goal. The symbol represent, represents Lord Gwyn's firstborn, who lost his deity status and was expunged from the annals. But the old god of war still watches closely over his warriors. Now, people think that that's Solaire because he watches over the cult directly. However, personally, I believe that the face there, the face in the sun, <coughs> the face in the sun, if you can see it right there, is the same face that Solaire is wearing, the one he has on his shield. I think that's all just saying that those symbols are meant to literally just be a representation of the Gwyn's firstborn watching over his warriors. Um, f what further supports this, I would say, is that there's a corpse that you can find in Anorlando outside of Lord Gwyn's tomb. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Lord Gwyn's tomb is sealed by an invisible wall, and the corpse is outside, and when you, when you, um, when you loot the corpse, you get a ring, and it says that the ring belonged to the son's firstborn. As far as I'm aware, I might be pulling that completely out my ass, but that's what I remember. Um, and he's there outside his father's crypt, and he died. The way I see that, I'm just gonna... It's, t it's time for some lore, kiddos, so sit the fuck down and get ready. The way I see that is that after Lord Gwyn did what he did, which we'll find out later, after he did what he did and left Anorlando, his son decided to come back as an undead and fought his way through. And once he reached the bosses of this area, these two guys called Ornstein and Smo, who are guarding uh, the sister of the son's firstborn, so, you know, um, one of Gwyn's children, um, once he reached them, he, he died, and he kept dying, and he couldn't get past them, essentially, like, just like a player, he got stuck. So he goes to seek power from his father's crypt, because he left a unique spell at his father's crypt, which you can actually pick up if you do get to his father's crypt. However, he gets to his father's crypt, he sees that there's a hidden wall, an invisible wall blocking the way, and he dies after he loses all of his hope outside the walls, and that's the corpse you find. And that's what I believe happened to the Firstborn. Nobody knows for sure, because once again, From Software is very, very secretive about this kind of stuff, and good good on them for that. Now, there's a whole area above here, <clears throat> and there's a whole myriad of enemies you have to fight your way through, and mimics, and basically what isn't up there. However, what you can do is you can just jump and skip all of that. Uh, that's amazing. That's one of my favorite parts of this. Uh, if you turn to the right here, go down the slide of stairs, and brutally murder these two uh, silver knights. As you can see, there's black knights and there's silver knights. The black, the, you can see the black, you, the black knight we fought at the beginning of the game, who almost murdered us, but we powered through. Um, there's black knights and silver knights, as I was saying, and the black knights were silver knights. However, they weren't in Anorlando when Gwyn did what he did, which we'll reveal once we finish this area. Uh, what Gwyn did caused the Black Knight's armor to, be to become charred, and the Black Knights also fought against demons, which were summoned forth by the Witch of Isolith. I died. I died giving a really, really poorly constructed lore lecture. <coughs> so the Silver Knights went to fight. Half of the Silver Knights went with Lord Gwyn to help him accomplish what he wanted to accomplish, and in the process wound up having their armor scorched completely black, and that's why they're Black Knights, and that's why they roam the world of the undead rather than Anorlando, and that's just one very cool, nice little touch left by From Software that they never address in the story. They just sort of, eh, it's just sort of there. It's just left for the player to be found out. And that's the great thing about the story is the ambiguity. The story is the story, just like the game design, is implicit, which I think is actually quite cool. That both imply a lot of stuff and both leave hints around places, but they don't actually tell you anything direct. I tell you some stuff directly, but not everything. I think there's value in that. I think there's value in not only implicit game design, but also implicit storytelling. As we're going quite undervalued in the game industry right now, I realize I'm not... I realize Two Inept Gamers isn't the, your source of gaming media and news, but I just feel I should say that gaming right now, with its stories, is, has not become very implicit or well thought out or creative. I mean, there are exceptions to the rule. There is just the outstanding story of Bioshock Infinite and the Buried Alive DLC or Buried at Sea, I think Buried at Sea DLC that followed, and those th those stories are just outstanding. That's an example of how storytelling should be done. However, there's all the crazy first-person shooters that don't even have a story, and I don't know. That's just that's just my view on the whole thing, is that implicit game design, as well as storytelling, is becoming undervalued in the industry. And it should be revisited! Damn it, game devs! Damn it all! We murder the Silver Knight. He actually drops a Silver Knight Spear, which is actually quite a rare drop. We don't have much of a use for it. Actually, we might. 
<laughs> we might. Before I go spewing crap again, it has okay. It has a, a C scaling with dexterity, which isn't that fantastic. It has normal damage isn't too high, but what's great about it is that little blue 110, which means it deals 110 holy damage, which is really good against undead. However, um, we're still just gonna stick with what we know. The great scythe is just such a good weapon that there's no reason for us at least that we should get rid of it. Unlock this door, we open a shortcut so we don't have to do that crazy ass parkour anymore. We'll go back to the bonfire. We'll what I'm thinking we do, which might be very risky because we might actually get invaded, uh we go Q and we kindle the bonfire because ten Estus flasks is gonna be extremely useful for the boss fight that's coming up. No, you know what, I'm not gonna chance it. Never mind. Forget that, I'm not chancing it. I don't want to get invaded and yet my ass handed to me by some dark wraith. Or have I? I could even get invaded by uh, someone from the... Oh my god, I've forgotten the name. The Moonlight people, the Gwendolyn guys, you guys know. They're not called the Gwendolyn guys, don't worry, From Software actually gave them a proper name. Basically, they're just another group of people that invade your world and try and murder you, which is always fun. If we go up here, we'll enter the main church building. We have two ways, we have up and we have down. Down takes us to these two giants. Um... I mean, like, once again, just like the other giants, they're quite slow, and you can't just run past them. However, they swing very fast, but if you time your dodges well, you can dodge... Sorry, if you time your rolls well, you can dodge their attacks. So Black Knight up here with, um, with a bow, but he ain't got nothing. He ain't got nothing on the backstabs. Now, the reason I'm not going towards the massive doors over there, behind which we'll find our bosses, is because if we go up here, and if we go up to the right, we will... Why are those doors open? Might be a visual glitch. Uh, if we go up here and go up to the right, we're going to find the blacksmith of this area. The giant blacksmith. And he can bring us up to plus 10 on our great scythe, which we desperately want, because plus 10 is a fantastic upgrade. Not joking when I said giant. So, if we have the required uh, items... We don't. We need two large titanite shards, but as I was saying prior to us coming here, he sells them! And this is a, this is fantastic. I love this. I'm not sure if this was actually in the base game. Uh, in the base game, I think it was added. Uh, Come prepared to die edition. Of course, for PC, that was basically the base game because we only received a port of the DLC, and not too great of a port. I should mention that at some point, this is Dark Souls. Let's play. Dark the Dark Souls port is quite poorly done. It runs natively at 30 FPS and can only be pushed above that if you download a mod called DS Fix, which basically overhauls the game. And it was made by modders. And the guy who made it is just a genius in my books. I have no idea how to mod, I have no idea how to do any of that, and he just completely fixed Dark Souls and all the issues the PC port had, which is fantastic. Um, the problem with it is that the game, like, the game runs in a really low resolution, and changing the resolution of the game doesn't actually change the game's resolution, it changes, like, the window re resolution or something. The anti-aliasing doesn't work properly, it's poorly optimized. It's just not a fun time, it's just a poor port. And I've heard that the Dark Souls 2 PC port, the Dark Souls 2 PC port promises a lot, basically. And we'll see, I'll, I'll wait to comment on that until it comes out, but I have high hopes. I, because From Software doesn't strike me as the kind of company that would just come out and lie about something. They have uh, they have played pranks. They have played very infamous pranks when it came to the, the amulet that you can get at the beginning of this game, the pendant. Um, but I do believe that come Dark Souls 2 for the PC, it will be well optimized. From what I've seen, it actually does look better than on the consoles. Um, and yeah, I, ha I have high hopes for the PC port of Dark Souls 2. I hope it'll be an improvement over Dark Souls and my rat killed me. I guess I shouldn't question the almighty from software because they'll just send Silver Knights after me. Um, so I'm, I'm receiving threats. Oh god, it's a sign. Anyway, that's not too much of a setback. We can just run right back there. I don't think I'll go ahead and edit this out because it's really just a very short run. And of course, I can just keep talking. We do a little hardcore parkour jump. We ignore the visual fragmenting that just happened where we sold through the staircase. We pick up our souls and we go experience the hell of Ornstein and Smo. Oh god, if there isn't a word to describe these, this, this duo, if there isn't a word to describe them, hellish, nightmarish, pain in the dick would all be very good ways of describing them. Now, 
Uh, let's go through the through the white light. We're gonna die. We're gonna die so much here, guys. We're gonna die so much. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right, and there's two of them, and they both move completely differently. One of them is really slow. One of them is really fast. They have all sorts of BS attacks. However, this is actually boating quite well. I don't know. Look, okay, look. There's one thing that I can say about Orsine and Smo is that I've beaten them so many times, and I never understand how or why I was more successful. I think killing uh, Ornstein first results in a much easier fight because. Smo's AI isn't that fantastic. If you haven't noticed, Ornstein is this short little guy with the spear. Who's also it was a nightmare in and of himself. God. Oh god. I'm sorry if the commentary becomes lacking here, but oh no, I can't. My guy <laughs> my guy just freaked out a little bit because he tried to put charcoal pine resin on a flaming weapon. Which uh, is a no no apparently. You can't double dip. And oh my good god, Ornstein is dead, and we only used one potion. Now, of course, because, you know, they love each other. They're a fantastic duo. Smo just kind of, you know, crushes Ornstein and absorbs his power. Ornstein is an executioner renowned for, um, renowned for eating the bones of his victims. That's actually a reason that he never became a knight, is um, that Gwen couldn't allow the cannibalism that happened. And yeah, now we have Super Smo to contend with. However, his attacks are quite slow and very easily, you know, predictable, so they're quite easy to dodge. However, there are a few that, you know, are kind of difficult. However, I might end up eating my own words. This one, for example, is a pain. That's why the little lightning after effect... After effect? The little lightning shock that happens after we died. Okay. <laughs> okay, we died. Guys, we died. However, we still have eight charcoal pine resins, so it's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, I'll just sort of... Skip back to that boss fight in a second. I'll see you guys. And in a we're second. back with Ornstein and Smo. Our souls are like right there. Okay, we got our souls. Um, so far I've just yeah, killing Ornstein first seems like a solid idea. However, I really can't leave myself exposed. You leave one opening, these guys will just ruthlessly destroy you. Um. We got Smo- we got- sorry, we got Ornstein down very quickly there. I'll go ahead and skip the cutscene just to save time because I'm pretty sure we're gonna die at least one or two more times. I just- I cannot remember, for the life of me, how to dodge that one attack. The, um, the slut drop, I guess. I don't know. His little booty slam. Dodge this. Touching the hammer actually deals damage to you. Not because it's massive or heavy, but it's just covered in lightning. I mean, it would be logical, but you know. It's not nice. It's not nice! We'll reapply our charcoal pine re charcoal pine resin, sorry. Um, I think we should be good for the most part. I mean, he's at, what, two-thirds health? I don't want to count my, you know, eggs before they hatch, but... Chickens before they hatch? I can't remember that saying. Yeah, okay. You know what? All things considered, we're not taking that much damage. From those hits, I don't mean I'm like, oh, I'm so pro, I'm dodging. I just mean, considering we're wearing cloth and he's got this massive fuck-off hammer covered in lightning, we're doing quite well. Oh my god, we staggered him. The stagger won us! Ah, the stagger! Guys, we beat them. Guys, we beat Ornstein and Small on our second try. Now, I would like to sit here and analyze it and say, oh, we killed Ornstein very quickly, and as a result, Small became quite easy to kill, considering we can dodge his attacks quite easily. But really, I just sort of hit Smo until he sorry Ornstein until he died, and then Smo until he died. And hey, it doesn't stop me from bragging about it. Guys, we beat them on our second attempt. That's that's fucking awesome. Um, our our dexterity is high is as high as we'll take it. I'm thinking one of our biggest problems now is a lack of endurance. Actually, no. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do. Great scythe. Requires 14 strength. I want to one-hand this thing. I can't stand not one-handing it. We're going to take our strength up to 14 and then just sink the rest of our... Okay, our sink our only other point into endurance. We're sitting pretty level 45 right now. I think we're slightly under-leveled for Anorlando. And now... We see 
Gwendolyn. Sorry, Gwendolyn. All I could say is like no comment from software. I'm not. I'm not judging. I'm saying it's bad, but just like 